Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 16 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, Season 5. I am smelting up uh, some uh, Dark Psychorium, because I have something planned for a little bit later, and right now working on some Electrum Blend. Uh, gotta get myself some Electrum, because that's going to be required for the upcoming build that I have planned for today. Uh, so all kinds of goodies here getting cooked up, you can see it occurring right there. Uh, also, want to sneak over here to my build crew craft chest how am i doing for hardened glass good i have a bit of it i'm gonna need some yep quite a bit as a matter of fact because today it's time for an assembly table that's right definitely want to get myself an assembly table these guys are awesome so uh just getting myself some energy conduits and uh i'm probably gonna have to sneak into my dust uh chest here get myself some more liquid redstone cool got a bit to get started with but gonna cook up a little bit more half a stack ought to do this will get me most of what I need. I'm probably going to need quite a few more of these, actually. Why don't I start pulverizing some obsidian? Should have some in here. There we go. We'll start uh, taking care of this stuff right away as well. Nice. So I've built a little add-on to my house. It's just a little extra room. Definitely smaller than most of my average rooms. But this is going to be... Boom, right there, my uh, uh, assembly table room. And I'll probably have a chest right behind it, which I'll probably just make right now. Why not? Can't hurt. There we go. And this guy is going to sit right here. Cool. So assembly table there. And you can see I've already outlined where I'm going to want to have a bunch of lasers up here. Um, now assembly tables are a build craft item. And they allow you to make all kinds of really awesome logic gates. Uh, now these aren't like the logic gates that you've seen from Red Power. Oh no. They are... Um, Part of a mod of Buildcraft that allows you to like detect certain things about the blocks they're attached to and react based on that. Now we're going to need quite a few diamonds to get started here. So I'm going to grab uh, pretty much, yeah, that's a good amount to get started with. Uh, also going to need a bit of gold, which we can see I'm getting a little bit low on. Uh, probably going to need a handful of iron. I should be good with everything else. So why don't I get situated with all my stuff and then I'll be back to start working on the assembly table. Let's go. All right, guys, so getting started with, uh, gonna need a stone gear, uh, upgrade that to an iron gear, and then up to a gold gear, and then finally a gear you probably haven't seen yet this season. Uh, this is the diamond gear. Quite expensive, four diamonds, holy cow, uh, quite a lot, but that's okay. Also gonna need some obsidian. Uh, I think I need a little bit more redstone, and that ought to do me. So let's check out the recipe for the assembly table. It's really not too bad. Uh, obsidian, five diamonds, and a redstone. Cool. And we only need one assembly table, luckily, but we can have as many lasers as we want. Of course, the more lasers we have, the more energy it's gonna use. That's always a good time. Uh, so the assembly table can go right there. Cool. Uh, next up, I'm going to have a nice layout. You can see I've mapped out this room for the potential for, I mean, technically I could have like 25 lasers in here if I wanted to, but I mapped out for nine. But I'm not going to start off with nine. I'm just going to start off with three. So to make a laser is really not too hard. Uh, a couple obsidian, a couple diamonds, and some more redstone. Okay, so let's get about three of them. Okay. Wow, just enough obsidian to get by. Cool. Now your lasers need power. And uh, the good news is we have this nice little power conduit running straight up and down this wall. So uh, I'm going to be able to tap into the basement here and come up with a way to get power up to my lasers. So let's see what we've got if I dig down this way. Should be breaking into my basement at some point here. Hey, there we go. Found my way in. Cool. So, uh, got some conduits running some power back this way. So maybe I want to tap onto this side of it. That might not be a bad thing. There we go. Let's go onto this side. Yeah. Hey, nice. Found my way in. Excellent. So I can just run the power conduit straight up to here. So I've got a little bit of this stuff. I've got more cooking up in my redstone thingy. But let's see. What do we got here? All right. I'm thinking I want to actually run it this way. So let's actually do this. Save myself a little bit of trouble. Uh, go into my canvas bag and get out my crescent hammer. Okay. 
we're going to actually shift it over one. And trust me, I have a very specific reason for doing it this way. Because we're going to come up with a pretty neat way to hide this uh, stuff. Let's see here. Okay. Yeah, I think this will do. Do I want to run this like this? Yeah. Give me just a few minutes here and I'll be right back. In fact, guys, I am back and completely changing my mind yet again. Uh, you know, prerogatives and all. Uh, gonna... Oh boy, it's dark out, isn't it? Come here, skeleton. That's right, I've got these awesome boots now. Yeah, they rock. What can I say? Uh, gonna run this power line straight up to the roof, I think. Like that. How's that look? Not too shabby? Alright, cool. Let's go back inside now. And I should have my redstone energy cells that I started cooking just a moment ago ready. Beautiful. Here goes nothing. Um, I really hate this being outside here, but there's, at this point, nothing I can really do about it. Um, so we're just going to have to deal with it. Cool. I mean, you know, kind of stinks, but oh well. We'll live. For now. I'll see if I can come up with another solution. But, like I said, this will do. Cool. So now we should be connected to our power line. Do I like this here, or do I want to bring this further back? I might want to just bring it further back. Let me see. Alright, not terrible looking. Don't really like it, but I think that's kind of the only option I have here if I want to get this power up into this room. I might put some kind of borders around it or something. Um, there is a block called facades, which work with um, regular builds craft piping, but they don't really work with um, the uh, conduits from thermal expansion. So I can't run it up the walls and cover it up. So we're going to have to kind of stick with it the way it is, but that's alright. It's not terrible. Uh, but the good news is we now have power going into our lasers. Woot. Uh, there is no GUI on the laser, so you can't open anything up. Um, so let's see how we can start using the assembly table. Uh, let's check out gates. Uh, there's a bunch of different gates available. Uh, your most basic is just a regular gate. Iron gates, gold gates, diamond gates, and then you get up to autarkic gates, which are even cooler. Um, but we're going to make a basic gate for now, and that's real easy to make. Just need a redstone chipset. Uh, the redstone chipset is pretty easy to make. Just need a piece of redstone. And the assembly table lasers will do the rest. Now, it does tell you here uh, 20,000. That's how many Minecraft jewels in total you're going to need for this operation. So we need 10,000 for the chipset and then another 20,000 to get the gate. Now, for an iron gate, uh, we need to go ahead and get ourselves um, a redstone iron chipset um, and a piece of red piping wire. We'll get into all this cool stuff later. But for now, it's pretty important um, just to know that, you know, that these are the basics. You know, don't worry too much about the details. We'll get into them plenty soon. So let's get ourselves a couple pieces of redstone chipset. Just go ahead and put a piece of redstone in your assembly table on the left. Now, uh, once you click on the right side here, click on the redstone chipset, that makes it the targeted um, thing. And it starts activating the lasers, which will charge up to blue. Um, blue is the highest power output that the lasers can do. And there's a little progress bar in the center here letting you know that the assembly table is doing his job. Awesome. Uh, and he'll keep working, as a matter of fact. The output will be in whatever adjacent inventory you give it. So this chest here is the adjacent inventory. This means that any um, assembly table work that's done will be output to the chest. Nice. Now we just need to give it a little bit of time, and everything's going to, you know, work out. So let's give this guy just a moment, and you'll see the progress bar finish. And then we'll get ourselves our first uh, chipset. Cool. Ta-da! Progress done. Lasers off. Chipset good to go. Let's go ahead and pop this guy on the table now, and you can see we can turn him into a gate. Again, the most basic thing that you can make, right? So we're going to give this guy a little bit of time, and now that we've got the gates going, we can start automating a couple really nice things. So let's uh, go down here and see what we can look at. Cool. So we've got our uh, magmatic engines, which are just doing a great job over here. You can see they're all each outputting four Minecraft jewels per tick. We're getting a bunch of energy stored in our redstone energy cell. Of course, all that energy is being shipped out at the moment to a bunch of different places, but, you know, looking good. I do have to kind of clean up this mess I made, so why don't I uh, come back in a few moments once I've gotten myself some smooth stone, cleaned up my mess, and then we'll talk about what we're going to use these gates for. All right, back in a moment. 
All right, guys, I think I've got everything I need to go put this gate to use. Now, like I said, it's the most basic thing we can do, but let's go down to the nether. Remember, we had an issue in the past over here, and if we run over, we'll see what it is. Right now, um, my lava is kind of hanging out. What's up, fire bat? Always hanging out in my house. I hate you. Where are they coming from? All right, where was I? Oh, right, this thing, right? So we've got this nifty little magmatic engine here, which can connect just fine um, to, to run this, um, you know, liquid transposer but we don't want to leave the thing running all the time because number one that's a waste of lava and number two that's going to be a bit of a problem with regards to it overheating so how are we going to resolve this well first off it would be nice if i brought everything i needed i just realized i forgot one little thing uh so let's head back to the overworld and check it out what we can get let's head back over here i need a little bit more of the uh golden waterproof pipes okay cool so yeah what are we going to do we're going to use the gate to detect when that machine has work to do and when the machine has work it's going to activate a redstone signal which will turn on the engine pretty cool right not a bad plan so let's just move this guy back a little bit yoink borrow you and you and uh meant to break the thing there so this is good here yeah you know what we'll leave this here just to be safe Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place down one of these wooden conductive pipes. Remember, they're connected to, uh, you know, make sure that the uh, engines can dump their energy into machines or into golden conductive pipes. I don't think we need golden conductive pipes here. I'm just going to put the magmatic engine right there. And remember to uh, hit your pipe with a wrench uh, just to make sure it's facing the right way. Let's do it properly this way. Come on, behave for me, would you? Let's try with this wrench. Huh, that's interesting. Not sure why this guy's misbehaving. You know what I might need to do? Let's do something a little different. I'll be right back. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and hook it up and see if it works. Maybe it'll be all right. So here we go. Magmatic engine's ready to go. Just need to put down some of this golden conductive piping. Now, uh, or, sorry, waterproof piping. Nice. So let's uh, play with this setting a little bit here. First off, I'm going to set this guy to require a high redstone signal, which means a redstone signal must be on for the engine to run. I'm going to set this guy to disable redstone control. So that means that he's not going to respond to a redstone signal at all. He'll just always be running. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to place the gate here. There we go. And I'm going to say to the gate, on the left, you set up your, uh, your, your if statement. So if you think of this as like an if then in programming, it basically says if this side is true, whatever you tell it, it's going to go ahead and do whatever you tell it on the right. So right now it says pipe empty. Well, yeah, the pipe's empty, but that's not what we want to check. Power traversing? No. See how the little center slot turned from red to empty? So red means it's matching currently and empty means it's not. Right now, there's no power traversing in this pipe. Okay, if we were to turn on this engine real quick, uh, we would see that this thing would turn to true uh, once this thing started generating a bit of power. So uh, we've got some power flowing here. Mm, maybe it's not detecting on here, but let's see what happens. Okay, what I want to actually check for is uh, it can check on the adjacent inventory, items in inventory, space in inventory, inventory full, uh, what the status of the tank is energy status so i could set this guy to can store energy and it'll see whether or not the adjacent block can store energy that might be a good one to go for so let's see what do we want to go with hmm. let me dig through here and see what we've got let's do items and in inventory let's try that one okay and we're going to say to emit a redstone and uh, signal when there are items in the inventory adjacent to it cool so now we can see that it turned on the magmatic engine not bad I like that. So let's give it a few minutes here and see what happens. Yeah, just as I thought, all the energy is being stored here. So this uh, pipe setup is just not working for me. And I really didn't want to break that. There we go. Much better. So we'll let this magma engine hang out for a minute. I think I have a better plan. I'll be right back. All right, let's try another setup here. Uh, I'm actually grabbing some of this stuff here and moving things around. Uh, I'm going to output out this side, connect it over to this way. There we go. Okay, so that'll work. And then I might want to run my power up. 
just to uh, kind of force the uh, golden conductive piping to connect properly the way it should. So just got to put this guy like this, and there we go. We've got the setup the way it should be. And I did not mean to break that magmatic engine, but oh well, life goes on. Cool. Uh, once again, setting this to uh, require a high redstone signal to run. Now, there's a couple ways I could set this up. If I used iron gates, I could actually run some uh, piping from here to here, but I don't have those yet. So instead, I'm going to grab some cobblestone and some gravel, and that'll give me a cobblestone structure pipe, which can kind of just sit here on the ground, actually not doing anything more than linking these two machines together for gate and wiring purposes. Uh, it's pretty neat stuff. So let's go ahead and try this now. Let's detect when uh, let's check for items in inventory now this guy actually checks the sidedness of the inventory not just uh, you know anywhere in the inventory so right now it's checking on the front of the machine so that's not gonna work let's go for uh, Ken store energy that sounds like a good plan and then emit a redstone signal cool so now it should start running the energy straight over to here, and this guy is going to start storing it. Perfect. That's what I wanted to see. All right. Now that the energy is flowing properly, let's go ahead and give this just a few minutes, and we'll come back and check on it um, just to make sure that it completely does everything it's supposed to. Nice. We're already getting some uh, MJ. Everything's rocking. All right. Be right back. All right. So now that it finished doing all the work that I gave it, let's go see if it shuts off properly when it detects that there's no more energy to be stored. Hmm, I was a little bit afraid of this. It's actually still detecting the ability for this guy to store energy. So this guy is not connecting the way I want him to. Let's see if there's another thing we can use here. All right, guys, I'm gonna have to go iron wire after all. Uh, so the iron gate is pretty easy to make. First off, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some of uh, this stuff in here. Just redstone, um, iron ingot, and uh, red, blue, yellow, or green are the options we can go with. I'm going with red, because that's the one we wanna use for our lowest tier. And I'm actually gonna tell it to go ahead and make some red pipe wire. You can see that happen very quickly. Red pipe wire is very cheap. Um, but now I'm gonna throw another couple pieces of iron in there with a couple pieces of redstone and get myself some redstone iron chipsets. I'm actually going to go ahead and get a handful of these guys. That ought to do. Cool. Uh, while that's cooking up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, probably just wait for that to finish and then I'll come back uh, on camera to show you guys where we go from here. Let's see how my energy cell's doing. Oh yeah, these guys are cruising. They're actually pretty overheated at this point. Let's uh, shut them down. Oh yeah, look at that. They almost overheated. Cool. Uh, don't forget, if uh, your thermal expansion engines do overheat, they don't explode, but they will require um, a good hit with a wrench before they can run again. Okay? So uh, plenty of uh, redstone iron chipsets on their way. I'll be back when they're done. And just because I really hate waiting for things, I'm going to go ahead and make three more lasers. I mean, after all, I've got the stuff for it, right? There we go. Three more. Nice, quick, easy. I'm really liking my arcane levitator, by the way. It's so cool. I get a big smile on my face every time I go flying up through that arcane levitator. All right, here we go. Get these guys hooked up here. Nope, wrong way. What's up, spider? No, you're not welcome in. All right, one, two, three. And we should have enough power flow into this line for all of them to turn blue. Awesome. Nice. That'll really speed up uh, the rate at which we get our uh, redstone iron chipsets. Uh, so let's go ahead and throw those in there. Now, the thing about the iron gates, and I'm going to go ahead and make an iron and gate, you'll see that it requires the redstone iron chipset and the pipe wire. Okay, that's actually the recipe for either of these things. So uh, you'll note that I have the option to actually just choose in the interface here whether I want an iron and gate or an iron or gate. I'm gonna go and. Uh, this current situation, it really doesn't matter which one I go for. Um, and you'll also note that I can choose multiple things at once. Whatever is currently highlighted will be the priority build. So it's gonna work on the iron and gates. And then, uh, you know what? I'm gonna throw even a few more of these guys in here. What's gonna happen is as soon as this is done making the two iron and gates for me, it's gonna go ahead and start working on a few more redstone iron chipsets. And the one thing I want to note to you guys here is the energy rate is actually showing on here, which is kind of cool. Uh, we can see we're getting about 24 and change energy uh, from the lasers. Nice. And uh, how much energy it's storing and then the energy required. That's pretty neat. 
All right, and with that, we've pretty much got our two iron and gates. Now, the cool thing about these guys, um, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and steal this guy, put him here. Good, now it's gonna really cruise. Uh, I'll come back and have a bunch of that stuff be done already because my base is chunk loaded. Nice. So now I've got two gates. Uh, these guys are more advanced than your basic uh, standard gate, and I'll show you why. Uh, you need to use iron gates if you actually want these two gates to talk to one another. I think I can shift click or I'll just break it. I'll get the pieces I need here. So uh, just needed to do this a little differently because of the problems you guys saw me run into a moment ago. I'm going to go ahead and place one gate right here. Now the problem before was um, with the gate touching both machines, it was actually reading both and it was detecting that the magmatic engine can actually store energy. It has room for more energy to be stored. So it wasn't working properly. So now I can go in here and check out, um, you know, inventory empty items in inventory, etc, etc. Uh, this should all work a lot better now. And you can see that the energy stored is true. And can store energy is also true. That's because it does have the potential to store a little bit more energy uh, than, uh, you know, it's not totally maxed out here. So I'm going to tell that to emit um, not a redstone signal, but I'm going to get some red piping wire here. I'm going to right click on the gate and the pipe with some red piping wire. And I'm actually going to run that over to here. See that? And I'm going to place my other iron and gate on that side. And I'll tell this guy when you have that enabled, emit a red piping signal. And you can see the red pipe signal turned on. So if you're watching, it turned off, it turned on. Cool. And when that red pipe signal is received by this iron and gate, I'm going to say to go ahead and emit a redstone signal. Cool. And it'll go ahead and run. It'll start sending power over. And then once this guy fills up on power here and he's completely topped off, uh, this gate should turn off the red pipe signal, which will turn off the redstone signal, which will turn off the magmatic engine. Not bad. Now, this isn't going to be the most efficient setup. Um, the reason for that is basically magmatic engines don't really do their best until they've completely, uh, you know, output uh, and run for a little while. So the heat up time required uh, to get your magmatics running is probably going to cause for a little bit of wastefulness. So I might upgrade this system in the future, but for now it's going to work pretty well. Uh, it won't run until it needs to. And, uh, you know, once we get some uh, empty cans in here, so for example, if I were to real quick craft a bucket and said, hey, I need a bucket of lava real fast. Liquid transposer, take care of me. Boom. Notice how it quickly turned on the engine. That's because it used some power here to give me my bucket, and then when the power is full, it's going to quickly turn off the engine. Awesome. Nice. I like everything about this. Very cool. Let's get back home uh, and store some of our goodies. Oh look, we've got a uh, pig man in my house. Nice. And while I'm here, harvest some of this. By the way, lots of comments on uh, some of the recent episodes that got released regarding the fact that you can now grow nether wart in the overworld. That's cool. I'm going to stick to growing it here in the nether though. Because, you know, why not? I already have my farm set up. No sense bringing it to the overworld. Cool. So uh, my redstone chipset should be being made. You can see it's actually made a couple of them. Nice. And I'll just store, um, you know, all the gates and the related items. I'll even store some gold and some redstone in there so that if I need to make some stuff in the future, I will. And there's some really good uses of that. The only thing I want to note to you guys is that conduits cannot currently work with gates or um, logic gates or anything like that or the wiring. And the same for the liquid ducts. So you have to use um, the, the buildcraft uh, piping in order for this to work. Cool. All right. We'll be back in just a moment. All right, guys, next up, I want to get working on a new uh, build for just another little spot that I have in mind here. And for this, I want to use a filler. Now, fillers are really cool blocks from Buildcraft that allow you to quickly um, build certain types of structures. Or in this case, we're going to actually be clearing certain types of areas. Uh, the filler is a really awesome little machine. So what I'm doing now is just going to build one. So it's pretty quick and easy. Just need a little bit of gold and some uh, Buildcraft power. So first we'll get ourselves some wooden gears, some cobble gears up to stone, iron, and then gold. Cool. Uh, from there we're going to need a crafting table and a chest. And you can see I've already made myself a landmark, which is a redstone torch with lapis lazuli on top of it there. Uh, now that guy is actually going to be used for a couple things beyond this. After the uh, filler, we just need some black and yellow dye, and that guts the filler for us. Nice. This guy is 
cool. Trust me. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is steal my redstone energy conduits, and I'm going to go steal my redstone uh, storage unit downstairs. I want to make more of these, but right now I just have the one. I might make another one between this episode and next, but we'll see. Uh, like I said, shift right click to pick the guy up. And we're going to bring him outside with us because we're going to go find a nice new spot to call home. Now, typically, without this block, if you wanted to clear a huge area of terrain, that would be... A little painful, let's just say. Uh, but today we're going to do this a little bit more fancy. So let's get ourselves a couple of blocks that we're going to need. First off, we're going to place down the landmark. The landmark is uh, a way of indicating, using uh, your buildcraft stuff, where you want the area of effect to be. And by applying a redstone signal to it, it'll send out these fake temporary laser beams that just indicate like where this block is. So it's not actually doing anything with these laser beams yet, but it's just saying, like, hey, I'm here. Cool. Uh, I'm going to come out to about mm, here. That looks like a nice spot. And then I'm going to come out to about, I don't know, let's go over this way and clear to about here. It looks like a nice spot. Cool. Okay. So if I now get rid of the laser beams and give this guy a right click with my mouse, boom, he activates the lasers that encompass this grid. Awesome. Uh, so now the uh, landmarks are doing what they're supposed to do. They're mapping out the land that's going to be affected by the machine that we attach to this laser right here. Like so. Cool. Uh, so I actually now see that my landmarks have popped off. So I'm going to go run around and collect them because I don't want to waste the resources, even though it's just one piece of lapis. You know, I'll survive. All right, so now we've got the filler mapped out, right? So how do we use this guy? Well, we're going to have to go collect a couple things from our house. Let's see what we've got in here. I'm going to run inside. I'm going to need for this contraption, oh, I'm going to need a little bit more clay. Uh, no, just one more cooked up. There we go. That'll do. You know what? I do need a little bit more. There we go. And I'm going to need some glass. How am I for glass? I'm doing all right. Got three of them. So I need some bricks and I need some glass. Long story short. Oh, good. I did have some bricks. Cool. Teach me to sort my inventory properly, right? There we go. I'm uh, going to have my conduits. And uh, yeah, all this stuff looks good. Let's go back outside and start clearing away some terrain. So to clear this terrain out, we just have to tell it to, uh, actually there's two things we can do. We can actually clear a three-dimensional area, but I've only laid out a two-dimensional area here. If I had another um, uh, um, one of these guys, another one of these landmarks up higher, I could have mapped out the uh, height that I wanted to clear. So instead of doing the clear function, I'm going to go ahead and do the flatten function, and that's what this guy is. Um, the filler, you can have, uh, there's a couple different functions you can apply with combination of bricks and glass. This one happens to be flatten. There's one where you can completely fill it in, build walls around an area. Uh, there's one for all kinds of different cool stuff, to be honest with you. Um, but for now, just gonna go with flattening. To give this guy a go, we just need to connect some power to him. So I'm gonna connect up this dude right here. Uh, got my redstone energy cell already charged up and ready to run. So now all I have to do is rotate this block here and it's going to start applying power to this machine and we can see the power starting to drain that means that it's probably running the machine let's go take a look around and see what's occurring so let's sneak over to this side here we should start seeing some stuff clearing out at some point somewhere along this line I don't think it starts at the top. I think it starts at the bottom. Let's give it a moment and see if it starts up. So I'm a little curious. I do note that in this cave back here, I didn't notice, but uh, the, the terrain doesn't actually come up to this point. So I think it actually does start at the bottom. I'm going to give it some uh, blocks. I'm going to give it some cobblestone to run off of. Let's see how that goes. 
uh, and see if now that I've given it some cobblestone, if it'll run happily. Let's see. Start letting power in again. Ah, oh, there we go. It used up a bit of the cobble. Uh, so what happened is the filler was waiting to uh, actually flatten out the terrain by placing cobble down in this area. So this little spot here where the cobble was placed, that's what it was waiting on. And boom, is it running fast. Holy cow. This guy is tearing up the landscape. It does start at the bottom like I thought. Ooh, getting dark out. That's going to be bad in a moment. But look at that. It just completely destroys the entire terrain and makes it nice and flat for me, which is pretty much what I want. Awesome. Now, the one downside is it does make a bit of a mess by dropping the blocks all over the place. Um, but you know what? For the uh, you know cost of being able to quickly clear out terrain, I'm down with that. Uh, it also will use quite a lot of power. So we can see this thing just tearing through the energy in my redstone energy cell. But again, how cool is it that I get to completely tear up this landscape and flatten out this whole area? Nice. Very nice, actually. So it's getting dark. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, jump in bed, and maybe by the time I finish sleeping through this night here, that terrain will already have been flattened out. Let's check out what happens. So sleeping real quick. And what am I going to build over there? I don't know if I'm going to tell you guys. I might wait until next episode for you to see. So what's going on? Is it completely cleared? Oh, yeah, it is. Look at that. Boom. Cleared out. Uh, now, it does stop draining power uh, when it has no more work to do, so that's good at least. Uh, go ahead and drop in that guy, and I'll pick him up. Nice. So now the flattener has done his job. He's completely flattened this terrain. So I'm going to pick up all this junk and these blocks and stuff, and I will be back in a moment when I'm ready to get to the next stage. All right, guys, and with that, I feel like we've pretty much hit that good old wrapping up point for episode 16 here. But what I will be doing between this episode and next, like I said, is probably grab some electrum ingots and make myself another one of those uh, awesome conduit frame things so that I can carry one around with me with my filler, uh, maybe even store it in my canvas bag here to do some cool stuff with. So uh, going to need to get a little bit more of this stuff. But like I said, between this episode and next, some electrum, some lead, more electrum. Um, more electrum, hardened glass. Okay, yeah, I can manage all that. Cool. So this is Direwolf20 signing off on episode 16. Hope you guys have enjoyed checking it out. Uh, come back next time. I'm going to work on a nifty little build in that area over there. And we're getting pretty close to the point where I'd like to start automating some resource income. So it's definitely gotten to the point where we've got way, uh, you know, too much stuff going on to just be mining manually. So that's probably what I'll wind up doing pretty soon. Is it going to be a quarry? I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe a quarry to start off with. We'll see. Plenty of uh, options, of course, which is cool. So, uh, yeah, definitely hope you enjoyed this episode. And as always, guys, take it easy.